Hello everyone, welcome to Liam's Lyceum, I'm your host Liam, aka Hemvar, and today I am doing another fantasy essay video. For those unaware, I do a series of videos where I look at an essay um, or article uh, related to fantasy. We of course started with On Fairy Stories um, by Tolkien and went from Elfland to Poughkeepsie, um, and then from there. This is number 14, so you can go look at that playlist and find whatever interests you. There's a lot of fun ones, a lot of good variety. Now, today I want to go over The Fantastic Imagination by George MacDonald. Uh, this is the oldest one uh, I've looked at so far. Uh, this is actually originally uh, the introduction in The Light Princess and Other Fairy Tales from 1864. Uh, so it's quite old. Um, and basically, let's get right into it. I'll go over basically the topics it covers, my thoughts on this. Uh, and a few quotes throughout as well, straight from the text. So um, this starts off with bemo bemoaning that the English language doesn't have the word Märchen, uh, which is German, of course. Uh, it's diminutive of an older German word, uh, Mär, uh, which means news or tale, um, which, you know, also by extension meant fairy tale or a folk tale. Um, he says we use the word fairy tale, um, even if it doesn't have anything to do with any sort of fairy. Um, which I guess means Märchen can mean folktale. Like I said, as I said, um, it doesn't have to be a fairy tale type of thing. Um, and he says, then if I were asked, or rather he says, were I asked, um, what is a fairy tale? I should reply, read Undine or Undina or something like that. It depends on who you're asking, but Undine is how we'd say it in English. Um, this is of course the novella, um, by Friedrich, uh, de la Motte Fouquet, um, so just look up Fouquet. Um, he's got a French name. He's German, though. Um, MacDonald describes it as the most beautiful of fairy tales, uh, saying he can't define something abstract, um, that a face is just a face and a fairy tale is just a fairy tale. So he gives, he says, if you want to know, go and read Undyne. I actually read Undyne after he recommended it here in this essay, and it is pretty good. Um, I'll have a review coming out for that, uh, probably in some months, but still, um, it is good. It's really short. And like I said, it's a novella. Um, he then goes on that and says that many uh, would not to attempt to define a man, uh, but say what a man ought to be. Um, he says he won't do this for the failed fairy tale even, um, but I will say some things helpful to the reading. Um, and to say thing um, that he, basically he says stuff that he would care to write or read in a fairy tale. Um, some thinkers, I quote, some thinkers would feel sorely hampered if at liberty to use no forms but such as existed in nature. Uh, this is the form of realism that fantasy rejects, is what he's getting at. Uh, McDonald says this does not mean an escape from law when you go into the fantastic. Uh, it needs to have the appearance of life. Uh, so it needs to have some realism, right, uh, with what we call verisimilitude. And you'll note this in fantasy anyways, is that people like it when it's realistic but still fantastic, right? Um, what others might call unrealistic, um, but it's very different from a realistic novel, which is a lot, oftentimes boring. Um, anyways, he says, while the natural world has laws, uh, mankind loves to suggest laws. Um, it pleases to invent a world of his own with his own laws. Um, this is the nearest we can get to creation, essentially, is what he's saying. It sounds really similar to Tolkien's idea of sub-creation. Uh, he distinguishes um, them thus. Uh, when, they, when they embody old truths, we call them imagination. Uh, when they are mere inventions, we call them fancy. Um, to be able to live a moment in an imagined world, we must see the laws of ex existen existence obeyed. Those broken, uh, we fall out of it. Uh, this is also sounds similar to Tolkien, actually, uh, if you go read on fairy stories. He then says, suppose the gracious creatures of some childlike region of Fairland, uh, talking either Cockney or Gascon, would not the tale, however lovely begun, sink once the level of the burlesque, um, of all forms of literature, the least worthy. Um, this sounds like some like Le Guin's idea, that, um, but worse in some ways because it implies posh or like Parisian is inherently better, um, which it's not. Um, law is where it, it's very... Victorian and romantic of him, and I guess to a degree, though. Um, he's basically saying, though, that law is where beauty is, and truth is only found in beauty. Um, an interesting and, again, romantic idea, but I'm sure it fits into a um, 
I'm not sure, actually, rather, that it fits so much into a 20th century or later truth, which turned out quite terrible, uh, right? Um, and some would say that you could find truth in stuff that's not beautiful. Um, or maybe this sort of beauty uh, is just something that he's not thinking about, or at least he's not explicitly stating, um, right? Um, that is kind of what comes after romanticism. Um, the key idea, though, is, again, holding to this law. Uh, he then goes into morals. He says it doesn't involve invention, but this uh, quote summarizes it. Uh, quote, it would be wicked to write a tale representing a man. It called good as always doing bad things, or a man it called bad as always doing good things. The notion itself is absolutely lawless. In physical things, a man may invent, in moral things, he must obey uh, and take their laws with him um, into his invented world as well. Uh, so morals have a different role here. And then he poses a hypothetical question from the audience. MacDonald has been supposing fairy tales are important and have meaning. Um, it says... Uh, the, the text says it must have some, at least. Um, beauty may be easier to see than the truth or meaning um, exposed, but hence the meaning of myth and story. Um, the story itself is the truth, or it wouldn't be beautiful. Um, now, whether this is a capital T truth or not is another question, um, but MacDonald really is on to something, I think, here. Um, he even references the thought that there are no disputations of on matters of taste, of course. Um that Roman idea, even. Uh, regardless, he says, one man will read one meaning in it, and another will read another. Um, and then the next question is asked of the reader is, if the reader is getting their own meaning or the author's meaning? And he, Mizano says it does not matter. Um, he says, it may be better that you read your own and that your meaning may be superior to the author's. Uh, this sounds like stuff I've heard before, too. Uh, it seems, uh, in some ways, ahead of its time. Uh, I've heard... Um, that so almost seems like a reader response theory for, uh, you know, um, well, literary criticism, I guess. So uh, then the question is asked of how to answer the child that asks the meaning of the story. So if a kid says, what does the story mean? He says, you can't say you don't know if you don't. Or he says, sorry, he says, you can say you don't know if you don't. So if a kid asks and you're like, I don't know what the meaning of the story is, you can say that. Um, if you have an idea, though, share it. Uh, the more meaning there is, the truer and more beautiful the art, he says. Um I would agree with that personally. That is sometimes my gripe with um, at least uh, like the visual arts um, of like modernism and postmodernism is that it doesn't seem to have a lot of truth. Sometimes it's not very beautiful. <laughs> Anyways, um, but sometimes there's there is beauty in there, of course. Um, he says it shouldn't re um, it shouldn't read this is a horse uh, written underneath a picture of a horse though, right? Of course, uh, he likely not heard the phrase to see ne pao peep. Um, which is a different uh, tangent in and of itself. But I, I kind of get what he's saying, right? He's like, you should paint a picture of a horse and people should be able to understand it's a horse without having to be told it's a horse. Um, and he's saying similar things with books, right? That you should be able to have this idea. Look at, uh, read a book and get an idea of it. Um, he does say an author doesn't need to state a meaning, but can awaken one, um, which is, I would say, the best type of books, at least in this day and age. Um, if it doesn't... Um, for you, um, waken an idea that is, then throw it aside, is what he suggests. Um, it may have one, but it's not for you. McDonald goes on to say he doesn't write for children, but the childlike. Um, this is tied to the romantic uh, theme of naivete. Um, again, uh, if you could put childlike is good, childish is bad type of thing. So um, if for those unfamiliar with um, romantic themes, I guess. He then even gets into allegory, uh, and I, I assume Tolkien must have read this, I mean, at this point, right? But, uh, and how he doesn't write strict allegory, uh, though something may work as one. Um, this argument could probably be, um, be paired with Lewis's allegory, um, which from what I can tell doesn't actually fall into strict allegory either, uh, but is allegorical to an extent, um, and is more so compared to a lot of other stories as well. See Pierce Plowman, though, for something that is uh, similar, uh, more of a strict allegory, though, I guess, when you compare it to, uh, like, Narnia by Lewis. Um, he didn't compare his fairy tales to the sonata, and what um, what to write about um, the sonata conveys to them, uh, essentially. Uh, he raised the objection that words are not music, um, and so should words be exact? And our wor our music's not either, right? You're going to get a vast array of ideas from music, even if it's programmatic uh, music. Um, there's a good chance if you don't have that program with you, you're not going to know uh, what those words actually should be. Um, and then even uh, language fails, and words don't have a one-to-one -one translation of signifier to signified. 
um, at all, and it changes between people as well. Uh, I think Jacques Lacan um, would explore this more later as well, if you want to look into like his uh, version of psychoanalysis uh, criticism as well. Um, McDonald goes on and eventually gets to um, saying that the best thing to do to your fellow man is awaken him to thought. Um, he says, nature is good for this, which is, again, another romantic theme. Um, do not label something as a horse if you cannot tell it as one. Truth has not come through you and out. Um, he makes um, some comic comparisons and then discusses meanings about being misunderstood. Um, I highly recommend you read this overall. Um, it firmly goes with what I have been reading lately, um, which is romantic stuff. Uh, if you watched my last week's video, that's, I'm talking about romantic nationalism as it relates to philology. Um, but I feel like this is largely relevant today. It's really easy to read. Um, you can kind of tell it's a little dated at parts, but for the most part, it actually works really well with a lot of other uh, fantasy essays I've read. Um, and I think it's in agreement with some of them as well. Uh, the quote from earlier, I believe, that makes it firmly romantic is, um, A fairy tale, a sonata, a gathering storm, a limitless night seizes you and sweeps you away. Do you begin at once to wrestle with it and ask whence its power over you, whether it is carrying you? Um, and then he closes with this. If any strain of my broken music make a child's eyes flash or his mother's grow for a moment dim, my labor will not have been in vain. Um, and then again, in this light, though, I can see why Fantasties is considered by some, uh, in light of this essay, right, uh, considered by some to be the first fantasy novel, uh, not a fairy tale as in four kids, um, though I wrote it as a fairy tale for men and women, which is to say adults. Um, and uh, anyways, and I had just read Fantasties. When I read this essay, I actually read this essay a few weeks ago, um, but I had other videos planned. So here it is, finally. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, this is the essay, The Fantastic Imagination by George MacDonald. Uh, you can go find it online. Of course, MacDonald is famous for, I believe, The Princess and the Goblin. Um, and then Fantasties, among other things, I believe he was Scottish. Um, and I believe he was also a minister as well. So anyways, uh, this is Liam from Liam's Lysing. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me uh, know if you have any more things you want to discuss. Uh, but I, catch you next time.